meeting of Tuesday, December 5th, 2017. If you would like to stand and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And with that, Madam Chairman, I give you a motion to move from regular order so that we can dispense with tax classification. Right, a second. I'll be second there. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we'd like to invite up Al Jones, who is our assistant assessor. As you know, every year, the Board of Selectmen needs to decide how to classify. Uh, historically, we've always had residential, commercial, industrial, uh, personal property all pay the same, um, the same tax rate. Uh, a larger town, you can get into um, uh, putting more of the burden on the commercial. Uh, we don't have enough commercial to, uh, to make that do anything except anger the commercial folks. Um, I think the bigger issue there is always how do we attract more commercial and then we we would see the tax benefits. Uh, the other possibility is having a uh, uh, allowing X amount like the first hundred like the communities of the Cape will say okay the first hundred thousand for full-time residents uh, in value they don't pay taxes on. We're not in a position to do anything like that either so my recommendation and the recommendation of the uh, Board of uh, Assessors would be to continue with the same practice as we've been doing every year and have one ta single tax rate across all of the uh, uh, across all, all the of categories. the uh, categories and don't do anything with any kind of a residential ex exemption. So, do we have any discussion on that? Well, the only thought that I had, and it's back to encouraging business and, and the like, is that uh, uh, for the sofa space, we've been doing some research. And so one of the things that you learn from doing that research is the Conservation Commission has said that from a position of the town of what's underwater, and I joke when I say what's underwater, we've got rivers and ponds and streams and wetlands, and those things are underwater. And so by the conservation, they're saying, somewhere in the order of 46% of, of our land base of the 16 square miles that we talk about, less than 50% of it is, is wet. Now, the other thing that happens, and Al's been doing some research, is that his research, when you start to get into APR and you get into all these other classifications, you then very quickly get from 46% up to basically as high as 55% yeah, of, yeah. of the land that's available to us that is really not taxable. Well, it's either it's either uh, tax, you know, exempt state, town, um, religious, or it's you know it's at a discount, um, chapter land, things like that. Well, I was, Brenda was talking to me about that last week, and what was the percentage she said that we have? I, 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 I'm not comfortable quoting an exact percentage, but it's north of fifty percent yeah, of I the know, uh, acreage in town. When I was just discussing that with her last week. So then it, what it then says, if you go down that open space uh, discussion for a little bit, what it says is how, how do you somehow monetize that? And, and really what it boils and begs to is what can you do to enhance commercial development of some sort? Restaurants, uh, tourism, tourism kind of yep. a, a sports shop, uh, you know, those kinds of things. Because again, Karen gave me a, a data dump of the, uh, the fishing permits that we've allowed. So, so far for 2018, we've allowed permits that translate to 603 cars or boats or both. So one person per, I'd just say. So 603 fishermen have come to, or will be coming to the town of Brookfield in 2018 to fish. But there's nothing here other than the pond to be able to, to take advantage of it. So, uh, it's, it's I think you could even take that one step farther and say, how many people come here recreationally? Well, they don't even fish. They just come and they're going to spend the day, you know, on the beach, uh, on the water, or on the beach. Yep. Yeah. And, and yet we don't we don't have anything, or we haven't encouraged. And what we need to think about 
and I'll put a plug into it now for the open space meetings that we'll have in January and February, is that we need to ha have people consider how to promote the town of Brookfield and how to, in fact, come up with some sort of commercial infrastructure that would, in fact, take advantage of the numbers of people that come through. Well, a few years ago, I was on a committee with um, Ron Kucher and a few others. It was a tourism committee. And we were trying to see what we could do to bring, you know, people to come in. And we were trying to use, like, um, the Quaybog River down here, where White's Landing is, like, is the main corridor. Because it's a beautiful area down there to go down. And that's what we were trying to promote. One of the things, it was like a 2003 or 2004 um, regional interconnection interconnective trail study that was um, done by CMRPC. One of the recommendations in there, and I think I provided a copy to the Open Space Committee, um, was a kayak trail actually that could be based off of, and one of the few private mm -hmm. landings was actually White's Landing, but it actually connected all the way through from East Brookfield to I think Warren. Oh, it goes all the yeah. way Oh, that goes all the way into Palmer. So, but, right. uh, but to your point, I mean, it's just there's a lot of ways that yeah. we ought to be leveraging that. Yeah. So I'll jump ahead to the Indian thing on the what what Beth just chatted about is the, the blue trail thing, and so as a part of the Indian uh, work that we've been doing, the campground work that we've been doing, we in fact did encourage the blue trail folks to participate okay. and come down and see where that is because that would be an excellent stop off. Yeah. But again, if we were to have blue tra blue trail people coming with their kayaks or canoes, it's how do they what what makes them stop here yeah. and spend a few dollars? Right. I know it is. It's a shame. Perfect. I mean, but we need to probably. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, it's really a shame. I mean, we had two restaurants here in town, and, and they're gone out of business. And I mean, yep. it, it is nothing really to br bring people into the town. You got to encourage it. it it's, for a, sure. it's a shame. We've got to do something. I think we just need to keep telling a good story. I think there is a story to be told here. It's a unique situation. We have a, a, a nice river connecting oh, sure. uh, two nice bodies of water. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, not every uh, town in, in the area has something like that. And you go by, like, you know, I go by because I live down in the Quay Block area. I went by yesterday, and it was so, the water was just so smooth out there. It's beautiful to go by. And I would really like to encourage more people, you know, to come here to Brookfield and see this, what we have here in our community, because it's a beautiful little community. So. Al needs a motion. So I need, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'll make the motion that we, why, did you want to say something else? Oh, no, I was just going to start to make the motion. No, I'll make the motion that we continue with the single tax rate. The I'll classification. Second that. You want to second on that? I'll any, second that. Any uh, discussion? No. Hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Beautiful. Aye. Now, after your meeting tonight, Karen knows how to log in. She. Hopefully everything will go well. We practiced all afternoon. Um, I think we worked all the kinks out and um, just go in and uh, uh, check the, uh, each one of you has to log in separately and then check the LA-5 and that should be it. And then I'll fill in all the rest, you know, tomorrow as far as, you know, updating that it's one single tax rate and then it hasn't changed. So great. we should be good to go. That's great. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you for your time. Thanks, okay. sir. So, Madam Chair, and I have a motion to move back to regular order. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I would like to entertain a, a motion to approve expense warrants and payroll warrants. We have an expense warrant for 1128.17 for $40,884.78. Approving expense warrant for 1128.17. For $1,941.40. Approve an expense warrant for $12,517 for $95,029.81. And approve a payroll warrant for $12,517 for $154,496.37. You, uh, you have a motion, Madam Chair. Any discussion on this? All I'll in second favor? it. Aye. Uh, I'll, I'm going to abstain because I haven't had a chance to review the warrants. Oh, oh okay. We, and then I would like to approve uh, a motion to approve the selectmen's minutes of 11 7 17. Do you have a motion? I'll second yeah. it for discussion. There were just a couple of nominal edits. Um, Karen, just so you're aware of it. Yeah. Um, 
On the footer, you have page six to six on all the pages of oh, minutes. Okay. Yeah, usually uh, <laughs> and then what should be page four, um, there's a couple of just minor issues um, where you discussed that the town treasurer asked if she could attend meetings and training to, to help her. It says help her financially. It was to increase her technical knowledge of municipal finance. I used whatever wording was used at the meeting, and I think it was Linda that said that. Oh, okay. And that right. was the wording that was used, and that's what I, as a matter of fact, I didn't listen to the tape this time to make sure I got everything right. Okay. And uh, just as a little aside, I just want to tell you, I was talking to Mike today, too, about the minutes. My minutes are really very long all the time. Yeah. And he said, really, I should just focus, and it's the writer in me that wants to write forever, but honestly, um, just I should just do the uh, just do the votes and through discussion, you know, maybe a, a, a few points, if yeah. necessary, yeah. but you know, not yeah. no more six, seven page minutes yeah. because it's unnecessary, especially now that we have to take. I, I was actually going to recommend that for you okay. as well, but so I wasn't going to I wasn't going to do it in this forum. <laughs> It's the same thing like with town meeting records. You really just record your votes, and if there was any special discussion, you just put that discussion right. down. Okay, so are we all good? set to yep, uh, approve that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay, then I would like to, um, we have here, uh, I'll take this one, one out of order, the emergency squad report. And I would like to... Uh, Congratulate uh, our anniversaries, EMT Terry Anderson, uh, for 24 years of service here with the town of Brookfield. And I'd like to congratulate Terry and tell her many, we hope we have her with us many more years. Okay, and then we have the treasurer's report. I don't know if everybody's had a chance to read that. Um, the, the Karen said there were copies yeah, in the yeah. folder, yeah, oh, but yeah, that I'm they sorry. had not been distributed. I'm sorry. That's yours. Maybe we could discuss for a meeting. I know that we're meeting on Tuesday, so maybe we could discuss some more of that on Tuesday. Yep. Yeah, there's one more. Yeah, we can discuss that on Tuesday. Yep. If that's all right with everybody. Yep. Okay. Okay, and that's so I just I'd like um, a motion to accept. It's just, yeah. oh, who else do we have here? And get the emergency squad. Oh, okay, I'd like a uh, motion to approve the treasurer and emergency squad minutes for the month. You have that motion. Second. Alrighty. Now we have announced. Oh, we should say oh. Yeah, cultural council. Oh, yes. Oh, I didn't. Okay. So I'll, right. I'll amend my motion that we're going to do all but the treasurer. Yes, report. okay. How's that? All right. All. We have the cultural council minutes of 11 16 17, bylaw from 9 18 17. 10 2 17 and 11 6 17. I would like a motion to yep, yeah, that approve motion. the votes. Yep. Second. Thank you. Okay, all, of, all, of, uh, all approved. Uh, all right. Aye. All right. All right. Now we have a, um, a reminder a winter parking ban is in effect in Brookfield from November 15th to April 1st for all public ways in the town during the hours of 11 o'clock p.m. and 6 a.m. There will be no parking on the streets, whether or not snow is predicted. Anyone in violation is subject to a $25 fine. Okay, now we'll open it up to uh, public access. Do we have anyone here for public access this evening? Evening. November 7th, we had the town accountant here, correct? Mm -hmm. She said we were only one year behind on free cash. We were two years behind. And no, I said she that didn't say that we were one year behind in free. Would you let me speak? Read the. I'm, I'm just play the tape back, here. okay? This is this is what I'm talking. This is this is what I'm getting at tonight, right here tonight. She said we. She interrupted me. And she said we're one year. Be, we're only one year behind in free cash. We're two years behind, okay? Two. You, Linda, said on November seventh also that we had free cash last year. We did not have free cash last year. We had not. We had to take money out of stabilization. Do you remember that? Last year? No, we took money out of stabilization for this past June because the free cash wasn't served. That's correct. That was the, that was the 16 right. money. That's correct. You said we had free cash the year before. We did not. 
I didn't say that we had it the year before. I said we had free that cash. We, this past. I said we didn't have the free cash certified for the June <clears throat> meeting, and that we were told by the Department of Revenue to take it out of right. out of stabilization, with the understanding with the voters at the meeting that when the free cash is certified, it will be put back right. into stabilization. All right, I'll I'll clarify it again. You said the last year we had free cash. We did not I have free cash. I remember saying we had free cash last We did not have free cash. It doesn't matter, Dave. It what does matter to the townspeople. My point is we we have not had free cash in two years. I just want to make sure that people realize that. Yeah, they realize it. They realize okay. it because we've read the report and carry it. Okay, carry but when we're at a public meeting, the facts and the truth should come out. We okay. Play the tape back. It's very clear. Okay. Number two, Clarence and Beth, you both said that my sign was not into the current bylaws. You said it was only 16 square feet was the legal amount. You both said that. My sign. I didn't actually say a, a, a size amount. You both talked about square footage. <clears throat> so I anyway, talked generically about square footage. If you want to review that same tape, I don't think I stated I any think type of yeah, single Yeah, review number. it. So anyway, yep. Clarence so you said it. it was supposed to be 16 square feet, and I have a 32 square foot sign up there. Correct? You had a permit for that. Huh? A 64 you square foot sign for, out there. Or a 48 square foot. You had a permit foot. for a 4 by, four by 8? That's correct. And that's what I have up there, 4 by 8. No, you have two signs that are 4 by 8. Ah. Read the bylaws. I have the right to have two signs, four by eight. And you both said it should be no bigger than a four by four sign. That's incorrect. So I want to, I want to clarify that too. If you're going to state the facts in a public meeting, speak the truth. It's on the tape. Read the bylaws. Well, let me pull it back up. Sixteen. I can have a sign four by eight up to thirty-five square feet. I have a sign 32 square uh, 32 square feet. How is yeah, four by eight? Well, 16, 16 square 4 16 no. square feet on each 16. Four by eight is 32. 32. That's two. correct. So that's what I'm. 32. That's right. Times two is 64. I have two signs. Each sign is 32 so you'll, square feet. You were permitted to have one sign four by eight. Yep. I got a permit for two signs. You don't. Yeah. There's no permit that shows two signs. I have a Bring permit. A I have a you permit of the sign. Right now? Give but, it to us. But just hold on. I got a sign. I got a permit from the building department. And then eight months later, I had to go back and give them another fifty dollars for the other side. So that. So I have a perm. So I got. I paid for two signs, which I have. Turn it over. Don't interrupt me. I have a permit for both signs. And it doesn't matter anyway. The fact I'm making here is you said I could not have a sign bigger than four by four. No, it's four by six. Four six, by four is what you said. Feet. Huh? 16 square feet. Six, 16 That's square correct. Feet. And what's the bylaw state? Up well, to 35 square feet. And I have 32 square feet. So let's pull up the bylaw. I, I don't think it matters. Well, it does have matter a, because he doesn't have a permit to exist it does because this board has lack of integrity, and you're talking about me oh, now. All right, Dave. Stop. That's, that's enough. Him. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying anything wrong. We're gonna have the police come over here and do something, Linda, because I'm talking no, the truth. No, I didn't say that. Is that what you're gonna do? No. Okay. I'm assaulting you with the truth. Yeah, that's no, all. You're actually no. out of order. Yeah, no, I'm not out of order. order no, I'm not. Let me. You want me to read the bylaw? I have it right here. Sure. Okay. I'll read it if you have it in front of you. Okay. In addition to parts one and two, which don't apply. And why don't they apply? Do you want me to read them? Sure. Okay. Business, so we're going to, okay. Signs in business districts, B. In business A and business B district, signs advertise in the name of the firm and the products and services produced or available on the premises are permitted only as follows. Number one, one sign attached flat against the wall of a building which does not project above the wall to which it is attached and which does not project more than 24 inches from the building shall be allowed for each business for each business on the premises but no single sign shall exceed 33 percent of the area of the wall to which it's attached that does not apply to me True. number two one additional sign for each business 
may be attached to a second wall of the building provided the total area of each such sign does not exceed 10% of the wall area. That does not apply to me. Okay, so let's get to three, which I was trying to tell you. In addition to parts one and two above, one sign or another advertising device of a free standing nature, that's what I have out there, may be erected for each business or such signs may be combined into one or more units. All such signs shall be located at least 10 feet from the public right of way, which is mine, Clarence. Have you had the state come in? 10 feet. Mine's almost 11 from the curb, yep. And which was approved by the town back in 05. Okay, Each, all such signs shall be located at least 10 feet from the public right of way, and no freestanding sign shall exceed 15 feet in height, mine's 12, unless a special permit has been granted, which I didn't need, by the Board of Appeals. That's, that board is something else anyway. In all, all right, cases- that's enough, we don't need comments in between. Oh, we, we lost the freedom of speech in our town, Linda? No, but you don't have oh. to make comments about other boards. Okay, I have that right to do that. In all cases, they're not present. All right. In all cases, the maximum freestanding sign are allowed per business is 35 square feet, and that's where so I stand. So the maximum freestanding sign is 35. So 24 times two is 48. 35 square maximum. feet. Maximum. Yeah. So one sign. No. 35 square feet. It says any combination right in there. So, so you don't have. So to if you have sense. more than one business, you can have it's, more than one sign. So, up, to, up to 35 square feet. So, what? So what you were reading? What businesses mean that each one has its own sign? What two businesses are operating on that property? Yeah. Well, if you want to get it's a, it's it's so a. So what two what two okay. businesses well, are operating on, on that property? Well, hang on a minute. First of all, it okay. was put up as a freedom of speech sign, which okay. has been used since 05. That's as we all know. That's. I but never saw okay. a permit that said freedom you, of speech sign. It doesn't say anything on the permit what I was but using it for. But didn't you also state that it would be... Well, let me answer. Let me answer. You also say in there a business sign? Isn't well, that what the bylaw says? It said yeah, the it sign say should specific say. Business ah, sign. but it does not sign. say in the bylaws you cannot have a freedom of speech sign. Okay. Well, well let's go back to Beth's question here. She asked me what two businesses do I have there. If you want to go, if you want to swing it over that way, I have the junk business. That's one. You know, and if you, you want to have another license one. down in Sturbridge, not in Brookfield. No, 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 no. So you have no, no. right to you have no I right have, to operate okay. that business on Brookfield well, Town property no, without there a you go. to that effect. Let's try to keep the integrity here tonight, please. Uh, okay. Well let me just ask you something. Okay. Is, is your is your junk business licensed in the town of Sturbridge or in the town of Brookfield? Let me rephrase this. Okay. I'm not, forget Was the junk your my permit. No. Answer my question. No, because I I, I misspoke. Forget the junk business. Is it permitted in the town of Brookfield or the town of Sturbridge, Mr. Holcraft? Neither one. Oh, okay. how's that sound? Oh, so, oh, really? So your business is not registered in either community. Or oh, it's registered in Sturbridge. Permit. It's registered in Sturbridge. But what? what I'm saying on that piece of property. Well, you just said it's registered in Sturbridge. No, but you said that you had a business on this piece of property. I do. The, You're the, saying the, the you permit is operating on that business. The, the, you the, should have a business certificate here for the town of Brookfield. Yeah, well, well, yes, ma'am. Well, well, let's get back. Okay, here. that's fine. But let's get back to the sign here. Let's not uh, go off on 15 well, tangents. You are the one that just went off on. You said the you know, tangents. I'm trying to get back to the signs. Just, but you are the one that just told us that you had a business here and you're not advertising, you're just That's correct. freedom of speech and That's you correct. be advertising your business. That's right. So I have the option of, I have the option to have a legal sign there for two, if you want to say two businesses, I have that permit. You have which, a permit for a four by eight sign. A that's four right. By, four, four by eight sheet of plywood sign. That's what you have a permit for that said that you were going to be ha having a business for charitable purposes. That's what you asked the for the permit for no, that doesn't say that at all. No, that's not true oh, at all. I would I would ask you to move over to the assessor's office and get a copy of your permit so that you can. I, well, I know what the permit doesn't say anything on it. I know it's registered with the I, I, registry. Deeds. But getting back to the th why you guys can have two signs is because I have the apartments as a business and I have my permit through this town from 03, as you know, yes, for giving things away, which is connected to my junk business. Yes, but if it jumps, so I'm just—that's the reason I can have two 
signs no, there if you the want to look at it that way. If you are using a junk business here in the town of Brookfield, it should not be registered in the town of Sturb. It should be registered here in the community. Um, and then right. you also just said that you have an apartment business that goes along with that also. And that's not a, that's not registered here with the town it's of not, it's, it's Doing apartments is a form of a business, yes. But that's not a business in and of itself. No, I can Unless have... Unless you're saying you're a holding company. You, you can twist it any way you want, but the, the bottom line I'm making here is so, I can have two signs so, illegally. So owning a rental property I can has have nothing two signs to do there. with being a business. Well, actually, we should not be discussing this at all. That's true. No. Because Mr. Okay, but my point... A suit against the town. We should not even be discussing this. Okay, I guess what I was discussing with you when I came up here was the integrity, because you said that I, you people said, oh, you can't have a sign yet. It's only be four by four. It you made be, that statement. It will be adjudicated in the court. No, no, but you came before this pub. You came in a public forum here on November seventh and talked to the town and said that my sign couldn't be any bigger than four by four, and you're you're illegal. I, I told you that your permit said four by eight. Yeah, but you said that I could only be I could only have a sign four by four. For another purpose. Four by four on that site. You could go so what there. I'm saying to you is you 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 misspoke, or you or I won't use the word lie. You misspoke. Oh yeah, call me a liar, David. Go no, for I it. didn't say that. No, because then Linda say I'm out of order because I'm spot talking too much truth again. All right. So anyway, I just want to clarify that on the sign, and my permit, Linda. You said it was no. My permit is still valid. Okay. There's nothing in the permit that says I have to come before this town every two years to get a new permit. And that doesn't say that anywhere in that permit. That. Yeah. Chair, we can't discuss no, this. We're point. not discussing it's the state anymore. Okay. okay. I made my point. I made my point. I corrected you on what you said about the sign was incorrect. Thank you for your input. Yeah, because I'm tired of you trying to make me be a bad guy, and I'm not. Seasonal worker. Bylaw. You talk about the law. The law. So that. Six months we can have a seasonal worker, six months only. The seasonal worker, she said, the town accountant said started back in July, he started in April. Six months is up. Remember last year we had the same discussion and you said, oh, he's trimming up, he's tuning up weed whackers. Remember that? So, so let's take it to town meeting and change the bylaws. Well, well, right, but right well, now. Actually, actually Mr. Mr. Holcraft, I, I would need to check. And was, was there a personnel committee meeting this last week? No, we have a personnel committee meeting tomorrow. Okay. Um, at the personnel committee, <clears throat> at the personnel committee meeting, the um, highway superintendent intends to transition the person who was previously hired as a seasonal worker. The seasonal position is ending, and uh, that individual is still employed as a casual worker yes. for occasional work, which is a separate definition under our personnel bylaws. Um, so that person will be indeed transitioning back to a casual standing with the town. Um, I don't know whether they were hired in a seasonal or a casual worker position category in April, but um, I think that he transitioned because he's also one of our emergency operators. And right. to the treasurer's point, people frequently hold various positions which would, which would have separate and discrete standings within the town. So he's transitioning back to a casual worker yeah. status. Yeah. I said he had an email about that yep. week. And so, we have grant money yeah. to, to expend pay. to yeah. do the <coughs> catch back yeah. catch Correct. basin locations but, where we were uh, mandated but, to do yeah. sometime. So sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Sometime. About four years ago. Yep. She yep. It on so but we're happening to leverage the same yeah. person, but they're going to be moving into a different yeah. position. Because yeah. after after your, so after you, your input, yeah. I did at yeah. least a little That's bit of research. I, I thought it still was a start date of July, and I said we need to ensure that he's ending at an appropriate time to, in order to be in compliance with our bylaws. Which however, we're not. Since there, it, no, <clears> however, since there is casual work available, I don't know what date he transitioned to that seasonal position. And just because he was working for the town doesn't mean he, whether he was classified as seasonal or casual. I'd have to go back to the actual. Okay. Seasonal. Okay. Back so, in April, six months ago. If I, the townspeople want another fourth worker down there, then they should vote for it. The townspeople did not vote for a fourth worker. People voted for dollars in a budget. They don't vote for positions. How the, those monies are spent once the <laughs> Here townspeople we go. decide it <clears throat> is up to the town to provide services that are aligned with the budget voted on by town meeting. 
Okay. So how those funds are distributed has nothing to do with the personnel bylaw and the classification of that worker. You're 100 percent wrong. The bylaw states this six is, months this is to have a seasonal I worker. Up tomorrow at the personnel right. board right. meeting. So you're trying to you're just trying to go around the bylaw again, make it fit fit so you people think that you're doing the right thing. Six months is up. We had this discussion last year at this time. Yes, but they can put you people want to impose and worker. and make the bylaws legal for everybody in this town, but you don't follow them yourself. No, actually, Mr. Holcroft, here's what's here's what's really inappropriate about what you're saying. We actually, despite the source, despite the fact that I don't generally agree with you. Of course, you okay. don't. Even if it's the truth, you don't agree no, with listen me. Listen to me for just a second. I did do some research. Uh huh. Okay. Now, one of the things about our seasonal bylaw that I know you're aware of, even though we've had this. this discussion about eight times more privately on the on the advisory committee is that a seasonal worker at six months could be full time for that six months and still be legal under our bylaws correct no six months no, is six I, months I, listen to me under our bylaw he could be six months for 40 hours or six months for 20 hours that's correct okay. that's correct so from a standpoint of classification you are accurate in that at six months they can no longer be considered in a seasonal role. Okay. However, what that individual was originally hired for for what was classified as the seasonal position, okay, that period of time covers a certain type of work that the highway has. They have some additional work, falls into a different category. It fits very appropriately into casual work category <laughs> under the bylaws. Oh my God, that's so, you're so full of propaganda. The bylaw states clearly six months, that's it. Not this, that, or what he's doing. And we're responsible for executing against the personnel bylaws. So, Bylaws, it's very, this is the point I'm trying to make here tonight with the integrity here. It's, it's very clear it says six months, and now you're saying, oh, if he gets, a, if he's tuning lawnmowers up, that's okay, he can do that for six months. Oh, now he's doing carpentry for the highway, he can do another, it does, bylaws doesn't say that. It can be casual, it, casual work is a separate Oh, now, yeah, now, now you're tagging on, now you're tagging off off the bylaws, now you, you're using no, a loophole now. Okay, so... So what you're saying is we got, why don't we just say so we got using a loophole? It's, it's I, guess we're, I guess we're using a loophole. loophole. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we're getting work done. Right, we're getting work done. We exactly. Have things to do. Yes, we're getting we stuff down in the town. Let's move on. Anything else? So. Yeah, how come, uh, how many court cases do we have in this town going right now? Oh, we actually have a report. It's probably 15, 18? 15 or 18. Why so many? Because we're looking at 12 properties. I think with minus those minus minus properties, I'm talking just in general, other court cases. Can you get you get a copy of them to me? To okay. You. Yes, we can get a copy. Okay, good. Yeah. Next question on your warrants. We used to list um, we used to list people as employees what they make every two weeks by their name in the no. warrant. No, not for a long time, because that question was asked once before, and even when our previous accountant was here, the people's names were not listed on the warrant. Okay, so I'll, get, I'll say it again. You used to list the town employees on the warrants. Now what you do is you're doing it by titles. It says operators. Now, we have, it says operators X number of dollars. We're talking about accounting now. Now, if you got six operators or ten operators plowing snow, which operator is making what? It doesn't say. Now, in 016, Linda, it had the listing of town employees or who was making what. In 016, no, I can remember talking, somebody had asked that question one other time, and we had our previous accountant with here, and she did it the same way. Uh -huh. I remember in 2016. It's, it's, it, lists, it lists people's names in the warrants. So now it doesn't list their people's names. So I want to know why that was, why the name of an employee was taken out and it just says their title now. That's how it is. But that's not good for accounting. How can, how is anyone going to look at that if we have 10 operators at the highway department and you look on that line item and it says, who, who did what? How much is that is for so-and-so? How much is that for that employee? How are you? 
Yeah. It's yeah. a matter of accounting. Yes, it does matter how much each individual no. is making. It she does matter. Have, but she must have that in hers, but she does not have to list it on that sheet. Well, we used to do that, though. I don't well, remember that. We don't do it anymore. We don't, she doesn't, they don't do it that way anymore. Well, are we hiding something? Are we changing? No, nobody's hiding anything. Well, why wouldn't you list down the operators that are working? The town employees and X number of dollars every two weeks. Why would you just put down the titles now? That's how she's been doing it. And the predecessor. And the predecessor. But why? But why was that? Yeah, why was that change made? You three must know if. I don't. It was done. Why not? I had a question, Dave, when I first started as <clears throat> back in 2013. Somebody had asked me that question on the advisory board. Uh -huh. I was told by the previous town accountant that she has never listed them that way. She said they're all listed under like the department. As of us, when and when was that change made, Linda? I don't know, Dave. When I when I asked her, that was requested. That was a question, and I remember I asked her that in 2013. Uh huh. So you don't know when that change was made? I was gone for three years, and then I came back on board. But don't you think, for accounting purposes? She has it on uh, for accounting purposes. I'm sure she I mean, has it all on her and she's being, yeah. and she's being audited, so yeah. she's right. being audited. Well, and back in the in, didn't think it was right when you tell her that she shouldn't be doing it that way. Back in 016, we, we had the names. Why do you have a copy of something? Yeah, names? well, yeah, right well, here. Well, we don't do it anymore. Well, you just told me you we just stopped it back in 013. It's right I here. I asked her that. This was stopped. Did we stop this about back in 016 sometime? Was that done when we maybe had the uh, interim? Yeah. Oh, well, maybe the interim um, accountant did it differently. Okay, but do you, do you think we maybe we should go back to, back to that part so we know who's, well, who's we'll doing what? We'll, look at the, we'll, we'll see what the audit comes up with. And if the audit okay, has, I think that's a good, yeah. And if he has recommendations, we will follow by his recommendations. Like we always have every time we've had an audit here in this town. It's the same, I mean, the same, you list, I mean, we have like 10 police officers. I, you know, it's all lumped together. I mean, for accountability purposes, how do you, how do you keep track of that? We have a computer. So I, I'm struggling to understand why it requires a name for accountability purposes. It's fundamental, it, it's it fundamental comes, arithmetic and fundamental of, of keeping no, track. No, listen, listen to me for just a second. Yeah, so, that's regular, my problem, regular, listening to you. I think I'm done. done. I'm done. I, I'm absolutely Okay, done. so I think I made some points here, and I guess what I'm trying to tell you people is if you're going to come before the board in, in a public hearing, make sure you have some integrity and make sure you get your facts straight. I think we're done. Before you state it. Okay, we're done. Okay. Anybody got a mirror? We can hold it. Anyone that knows me will tell you that I tell it the way it truthfully is. All right. Okay, we're finished. Madam Chairman, thank you. You're welcome. Comments? Thank you. You're welcome. And most of all, Beth, thank you. We'll talk again. I do. Oh, I absolutely. All right, all right, that's enough. Mr. Um, Mr. Martell, Chief Martell is okay. When Mr. Heller started public access years ago, it was under the best of intentions. It has never been utilized with rare exceptions to that. Your means of getting on the agenda is rather simple. You call Karen, call one of you, ask to be put on the agenda, and if it's legitimate and professional and um, reasonable, you're put on the agenda. There is no reason this board, and furthermore, when the board does choose to subject itself to um, whatever you want to call it, tirade may be a little extreme, but you don't need to engage. If a dog, if you walk down the sidewalk and a dog starts barking at you, you don't reason with it. You keep walking. So just for your own sanity, I, I know all three of you have some great, you don't need to subject yourself to this. You can nod and smile politely. But furthermore, I think the public access portion of the meeting has run its course and you should consider eliminating it. And if anybody has a reasonable reason to address this board, they can do it just like everybody else and be, has to be put on the agenda and go from there. I think the board, 
I think the board deserves the respect that it can stand up for itself for. And I think the, the anonymous imaginary minions out there that keep getting cited, if they disagree, they can come up and occupy more than two chairs at this meeting. And I think perhaps that the reason that only one or two chairs are occupied at these meetings might be for what I just mentioned. So Thank you, Peter. that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Are we all set? Any, any, anyone else have anything for public access? We we'll move on to, we'll go back here for, to number two. And this is a, a resignation that I regret that we have to take. It says, after much thought and evaluation of the, my travel business and teaching schedules, it has become apparent that I cannot fully guarantee that I will be available to participate in the up and coming budget cycle. Steve Gillis, chair of the committee, has developed a very good operating structure for the committee and an outstanding mission statement. The current committee members are very well versed in accounting and finance that should come to serve the committee well. I believe that there are other qualified individuals who wish to serve on the committee. I will continue to serve on the Board of Assessors with your approval, approval in the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. And this, was, this is a resignation from the Advisory Board, and this is from Bob Felton. And uh, I, I regret that we have to take this because Bob was excellent on that board, yeah, and I hate to see him leave, so I would like a motion to accept. Accept with regret. With I'll regret. second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Karen, would you send him out a letter, please? Thank you. All right. Now we have um, some appointments here. If you'd like to come up, we have uh, a new full-time patrol officer. The sergeant would like to bring him up. Welcome. Welcome. Smiling. Always. So if you'd like to tell us, Sergeant, a little bit about him. So this is Matthew Lavriori. He was hired back in May by us as a part-time officer after doing some uh, time in East Brookfield as well. Um, since he came on with us, he flew through the field training program. He had some experience, obviously, um, and he proved that he was definitely committed to the town of Brookfield and the, the police department. He worked shifts around the clock, um, moments notice, um, and after putting it out several times and then deciding that we needed to go internally, we did interviews and he scored number one. So he was offered the job. Okay. Standing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And he's local. He lives in East Brookfield. He oh, was born cool. and raised there. So Excellent. he's got ties to the area, knows the area, and. Excellent. Excellent. You that's that's nice to hear somebody in, from a neighboring town that yep. knows the area and the, and the communities. That's nice. All right. So I would like a motion to appoint full time police patrol officer Matthew J. Lapore. You have that motion. For a term to expire June 30th, 2018. I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And welcome aboard, Matthew. Thank you. It's nice. He has to sign it as well, too. Thank you. I don't know if you all want to sign it all together. Yep. Okay. So this is um, this is the new agreement that we've developed um, in conjunction with the police contract uh, negotiations. Since there's a history um, of um, officers coming to work for us, us funding their schooling, mm -hmm. and then. Um, after that funding they leave us um, frequently not very long after receiving yeah. the benefit of the fund of the schooling mm -hmm. um, so this is a, an agreement um, between the town of Brookfield and uh, Mr. Lapierre um, that basically acknowledges a, a certain debt to the town should he leave prior to 24 mm -hmm. months with that being on a sliding scale of, of reduced liability um, after that, I know we had discussed the yes. development of this, mm -hmm. and if we can, uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, uh, for us to approve that agreement. Okay. Yeah, 
And that's the same. Yeah, that's the, same. the same text that um, was provided. Uh, he signs that in front of the, the oh, town clerk. Right. Right. After he's sworn in, yeah. you have to go see Mike Siri, the town clerk, and yeah. Mike will swear you in. Okay. So yeah, he can take that. Oh yeah, actually. Yeah, but take that to Mike. Take that to Mike. It's your earliest convenience. So he he has even if you're only free in the evening, he has evening hours tomorrow. So I'll be here tomorrow. He's here, he's here during the day. I think he comes in at 1 o'clock tomorrow? Yeah, 1 or 2. If you're around tomorrow. Yeah, 1, he's here. And that's all been reviewed by town council. That's good. That's something I've been wanting for a long time now. Good work. That's good. So, you want to okay. Oh, we have to make a motion. Make the motion to approve the uh, uh, the individual agreement with Mr. Uh, Piori. Um, I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Or I should say, patrolman. Yeah, that's great. for yourself and then we'll just grab the original okay. is this something maybe we should have done too with a notary that was not something that really came up when somebody's signing an agreement sometimes if they personally appear before the notary to sign this agreement mm. that may be something we need to think about in the future so Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And our second appointment is uh, to make um, director of uh, Peter Martell is going to become the director of emergency management agency, and his term will expire on June 30th, 2018. I would like to make have a motion for this. Do you have that motion? I'll second. Um, in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Yeah, this one? Yes, right. yeah, because of Mr. Carmen Head. And then I would like, um, Keith Carmen would like to be appointed to be the Assistant Director of Emergency Management Agency, a term to expire on June 30th, 2018. I would like to motion to appoint both of these people to these positions. You have that motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Beth okay. can like a motion to sign the 2018 class two licenses okay yeah go ahead okay our first one here is for richard a ross dba bnr coach work 62 town farm road uh, Brookfield. so i should say we have a motion that's second, second. Yes. Do we want to take the motion though for all of them? Yeah, I think. I think, yeah, we'll I think there's motion. just there's just two of them, right? Uh, right. There's just two. Yes. Two. Two. Yeah, there's two of them. Two of the two. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And this one is for um, Brookfield Auto LLC, 14 Post Road, Brookfield, Mass. Right. Right. Oh, 
some more fishing licenses. Yes, I know. Oh dear. Got more to add to collection. <laughs> In the past year, I, I don't think I've seen this many coming through. Well, we did a calculation on beach use, yeah. and we're t probably talking in the order of over a thousand people that use that beach in eight weeks. Wow! Yeah, and a lot of them are not a even lot of out of town yeah. come in. Yeah. Okay, we have some of our. Um, these are for our permits for uh, ponds to have their fishing derbies, and I'd like to have a motion to accept. We have one. We don't have two. Two this evening. Motion. And like the motion to sign these. You have a motion. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, this is for the Chicopee Bass Association, and this one will be on 4-15-2018, and the other one is for Extreme Bass, and that will be on 4 28 Pass them on. Yeah, just let me look at the count. That's 20. Mm -hmm. So there's another 40, we're up to 650. Yep. And then under other, I would like to bring up the, I had a call today from um, the um, zoning enforcement officer. And last night, the bylaw committee uh, voted not to have a yard sale permit. Voted, they voted it down, and he wanted to know if it was something that we could do. The board of selectmen to probably put this on the budget. I mean, on the ballot, right. yeah. because he's been trying to. You know, he's been working very hard to have people clean up their yards instead of just leaving them out there as a permanent uh, yard sale all year round. That would mean they would. I, I'd like to get some wording from another community on this. Be, and have people would just come up, it would probably be no cost for this. It would just be a permit that was um, taken out and probably the, it was taken, I know in Palmer that the town clerk's office does them. And right. they just have to fill this out and we make a copy and that's it. So I'd like to get, you know, one of us can uh, go ahead and get some it's word if you'd like to do that and we can put it on and we'll sponsor it and uh, put it on when we have our town meeting in um, January. Right. And I do think uh, um, one of the things we do also want to kind of work out between ourselves and the bylaw committee is the last charge, I believe, for them was written in 2010. And, and we may want to just get an overall, do an overall review mm -hmm. and, and uh, determine where some of the uh, other areas of our bylaws may be kind of aided uh, and get it aligned with. Uh, both Mass General yeah. Law and some other I think, areas. I don't know if that was in the first one or not, because I think that was one of the reasons why they had formed that, was to, because I know a lot of the bylaws now are you know, statutes by the state, and I know, and they were also going to check, I think, to make sure every all of these were sent in to the Attorney General's office when we had, um, you know, town meetings. Correct. Right. All of that was done. So, yeah, I know we do have to look at the charge, but this is something, though, that he would like us. So I'd like to make a motion that we sponsor a, probably a, uh, an article to go on the January town meeting for, for a bylaw, for a yard sale permit. We have that motion. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Does anybody else have anything to bring up on Darla? Um, I do have one. A uh, small thing, well, or not so small thing, is uh, um, I didn't get this to you. I apologize in advance. Um, it's just a handwritten uh, proposed charge for the memorial committee. Um, it's, Wasn't there one written? There's a, a, a previous one, um, but I believe that the committee was dissolved, and I had just a couple of change recommendations um, for the committee. Really, the only two changes I was going to recommend was to change it from a five member from a seven member committee to a five member committee with up to two alternates so that, that way they could they'd have an easier time keeping a quorum um, and um, the only other uh, change of significance was um, from the original was to include that um, the way it was phrased in the original one was to that they'd work tan tangentially 
with um, the ban uh, with either existing or past committees like Bannister Common and Mall Committee and the Master Plan Committee. I added Historical Committee to that as well because well, I feel it's important. I don't know if we have the Bannister Committee. And it, it, it doesn't still exist, but to, no. to stay aligned with the Your decisions as, yeah. as mm -hmm. things were done by those committees because okay. those committees established certain kind of community expectations mm -hmm. for what the mall would look like, for what the um, and with the master plan committee, kind of what the overall character mm -hmm. of the town was intended to be, and then I, I kind of tossed in the historical committee as well. Um, and then if there was any funding that, that they were going to request, that they should work, coordinate with advisory and capital improvement planning committee. They're going to try to self-fund. They're, they're already opening up a uh, like a GoFundMe site. i got to get the, the uh, links for it and I'll get that to Karen okay so um, for next meeting then so if you want to do that up and you know right. we'll look so it over actually if we could pass it over to Karen if she can read my handwriting if she would be kind enough to type it up for me I'd appreciate it okay right, we'll discuss that probably at our next meeting we'll right. have a copy when you all move that'd be awesome okay Clarence, you have uh, just a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is that we're meeting Tuesday, mm -hmm. right? And and that we weren't going to meet on the 19th, or we are going to meet on the 19th. Uh, well, I'll be away on the 19th. That's why we didn't. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So that was that was a question I had on that. So this uh, coming Tuesday. This coming Tuesday at nine. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, but most of it basically will be an executive in the, an executive, in executive board executive. session. Yeah. We might I'll just bring up one other thing. That's it. If there's anything cogent to the advisor, I'd be happy to email you the, the information. Uh, just to let you know, on the latest on the campground, paperwork went to Boston as far as mass historical mm -hmm. to mass historical, and with all luck, uh, they will get, cut us a check for half the pay, the return payment on Friday. Oh, so we should great. see it. We should see a check from uh, Mass Historical back to the town Good. next week. So that's that. We've got some loose ends that people are going back and forth. These things, because we're talking National Register and the finicky, that, that those folks being very finicky about mm -hmm. uh, how pictures are put in, and we'll still have to work those kinds of things. But uh, we've got cooperation to do that so that that will carry on. And I think I mentioned the open space meeting that's going to happen this Thursday where the group of steering committee people are going to review some of the uh, inputs in preparation for public hearing kinds of meetings in January and February. So I just want to let people know about that. So that's uh, what I, that's and I... If I could add to this real quick, I remember um, uh, Mr. Heller brought some boxes over the other day. Did you see yes. them? And did you see there was plans yes. years ago for the open space? Yes. Well, and, and maybe we talk about that just for a second. Yeah. So we did have one copy of the open space book mm -hmm. from last time. Mm -hmm. We now have three, which is terrific yeah. as we now move forward for different people to take advantage of those books. Um, so that will be very helpful as, as we kind of move along. What's going to come out of... Um, again this week and then moving into next year is what do you really want to do with open space it really <coughs> in a, a cr across the spectrum yeah as is that we really haven't done anything other than we published a book that we were required to do and we did that do we now take some um, effort to do something more um, do we look to protect some space or do we uh, you know, or do do or do we move to a, th a third position, which is saying, you know, do we promote the fishermen, do we promote the idea of the, the uh, uh, an idea of having a restaurant or people that might be interested to start a bait shop or whatever, um, just so that we could actually gather some cash. So people will be talking, this Thursday they'll be talking about those three different ideas and how they might flush out, and then in January, February, look to a larger group of people to input as to what a direction should be because then we then move to CMRPC and we have them uh, writing a grant for us to actually do the work of publishing the document and so it'll be the basis for that document. I think it also would be if we have some open space it would be something nice for some you know trails for walking trails and, and biking and if there's okay. anything you can hike. So, so, so can I jump ahead on that one? Speaking sure. of, the, uh, of the campground um, and uh, the, the, what they really want to do is protect that site. Yeah. 
there are just that number of burials. I mean, it's where they dug, they found. And so we've got to be very cautious out into the future as far as uh, protecting that site. That would be an, uh, an obvious area for a path. And one of the documents that we have have received is an idea of a walking trail around the periphery of those 15 acres so that that would offer something there as well as the kayak stuff and the, and the like. Especially if <clears throat> we could at least find some some minimal, minimally obtrusive way of kind of doing the doing some sort of educational narrative signs or something along that to talk about the, the peoples oh, and the history and that, all that. That's why I brought this card. So there is a meeting uh, on January 25th in Millbury where we can go and learn about this year's Mass Historic Commission um, opportunities for 50% match. And so we have until March 23rd to decide whether or not we want to do that. Uh, what I do have for the campground, just so everybody knows, is that we have three buildings left. The, uh, those buildings need to disappear. And so uh, the estimate to making those buildings disappear and doing the rest of the, any cleanup and whatnot would be about $12,000. So the thought that I have is we go at, ask the minimum grant that they'll look for from Mass Historical is $15,000. So what we do is we get a quote for the signs, yep. and we go ahead and have them at least cost share with us the idea of cleaning up those three buildings. And again, that would come to town meeting in the spring, to whether or not we would fund that. But I would, I, my plan would be to attend the January meeting so that we're prepared to have a grant available by the March 23rd time, such that by town meeting we would then vote whether or not we wanted to proceed in that manner. That's all I have now. Good. Okay. And I just want to say, I can't, I'm trying to get online and I can't, I don't know why, but you do have a meeting on the 19th, as a matter of fact. Well, are we going to, are you going to hold that or cancel it or? Shall we? Um, is there much really on the? Well, uh, Andrew Lowe is going to come down and explain an update. I mean, I'm sure it could probably wait another week or so, but what happened is, remember we had another, another meeting during the day? Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah, I had it And we, we canceled that, which I think was on the so that's what yeah, we had it right here. We we thought first to have the classification, right. then we have to leave. Do we want to maybe meet either say on Thursday the twenty first, say during the day? Can you how, what can you do best for uh, meetings during uh, during the day? Earlier in the morning is better for me, and Tuesdays and Wednesdays are generally better for me than any other day of the week. What time say on when, on on a Wednesday, say the twentieth? If we have some things to come up. Um, probably uh, either eight or nine is best. Nine. Can I could, I could, I could even I could probably do as late as ten as long as I know in advance. Nine o'clock sounds good. Okay, yeah. I got twelve. Oh, okay. oh, that's probably so, better for him anyway. So we'll tentatively set up a meeting for December twentieth at nine a.m. I'd like that motion for this. You have the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. <coughs> Something from Oops. Yeah, pardon me. Yes, I remember that now. Central Thank Mass you. Regional Planning here. And um, they wanted somebody to attend their next meeting, and I think I had seen in an email that possibly you could attend that. I might be able to make it. Yep. It's, It'd be a little bit tight getting back from work, but I can. Yeah, it's December, it's December 7th at 5 30 p.m. So if you were to go, I have an interest to do that, but I was booked okay. at that time. Mm -hmm. This is about transportation yep. and, and traffic counts and all those kinds of things that we've been worried about and thinking about. Um, I would be very much interested to support that, okay. but I just can't do this meeting. Okay, so would you want me to put your name yeah, in? Yeah, you can put my name in Okay. and then uh, go from there. And it's, again, if it's, if it's somebody else, that's fine. But again, we're, we're, we're really looking for some data as far as how to grow the town, especially commercially. Mm -hmm. uh, this would be very helpful. Yeah. Are you available to go, Linda, or, or? No, I had this. No, I have some. No, I can't go. No, I have something planned too for that day. Okay. So I'll 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 make a college effort to get there. And okay. if you if if you have a struggle with that, Karen, could you do me a favor then and just say that I just can't make this meeting, but I would be interested if that were possible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Should I think? No, 
looking up the show, right? Yep. Well, I guess that's it on our agenda. If I'd like it doesn't. It doesn't to hurt to send. It doesn't hurt to send him a note anyway, though. Mr. Blaze, I think there another note. Oh yeah. Okay. So. Does he have something? No, I'll tell you what he wants, but I think this piece of paper. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Oh, is there another one here? Go ahead, Karen, because I've chatted with him since. Oh, okay. Yeah, right there. All right. This is from Roland Blaze. Uh, he said, um, "I'm requesting that the selectmen." Selectmen and women use use of the town hall kitchen every Saturday morning from seven seven to nine a.m. for a men's Bible study. Please advise Roland. And so, given that information, I have contacted Roland mm -hmm. to offer the church to him. Okay. So I think we just put this one on hold for, oh, okay. and so and I'll work with that. Roland okay. because okay. we we we're, we're probably better set up. For a Bible study, yeah, probably, there. and I think too, where you know we've cl like closed the town hall on Friday, exactly, and then yeah. break open it. Now, does the other group still come in? The AA group? They do. They come in Sunday mornings. Okay. Mm -hmm. They still, they still are here, and they regulate the heat. They turn it on. I think it's probably cold. I don't know that they <laughs> turn it on. <laughs> they just chill. They just yeah, chill. Right. Okay. So I guess this is it. Um, Correspondence, and you've already talked. That's good. You talked. Yeah, talked about it. All right. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn at uh, seven thirty-six. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.